So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Guys, I'm not going to make the PowerPoint full, sc full screen because I'll lose it on my screen. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through what we need to we actually be able to create some data. So the example I'm going to give you here, guys, is about collecting data um, to create or to create a map of sound levels around your own school. So using your own school locality to be able to do this. OK, so what you will need, you will need a smartphone um, and you'll need one of two, one of two of three apps we've got here. So the one I'm going to use is one called Decibel Meter and this one records the decibel levels of, of where you're stood and location. And I need a tool that will enable me to collect a grid reference, so a location-based app. So the two I'm going to suggest, guys, if you've got an iPhone, I'm going to suggest the Grid.GB app, which is really good. Now, I don't have an Android phone, but the one I've also seen on Android is a grid reference OS. Now, within both of these apps, you'll actually be able to record the 10-figure grid reference of where you're stood. So it's incredibly accurate for collecting your data in a locality. So really nice, good way to be able to do this. So this one is going to look at who's got the noisiest street. And again, we're going to use these to look at your location, and it's about collecting data. So these are the three apps I've mentioned. So this is what Gridpoint GB looks like. So you can see we've got a 10-figure grid reference. Grid reference OS has got eight-figure, but we can change that to 10. And the decibel meter gives us our decibel reading for a location. So what you're going to do as a group, you can do this as a group or as individual students. Each pupil will record their location using one of those two location-based apps. They will also collect the decibel level at that point or location. All they have to do is take a screenshot with their phone. So you take a screenshot of your lo of your location, which gives you a 10 feet good reference, and then a screenshot of the extra information you're collecting. In this case, we're looking at sound levels. Now you can collect this as one spreadsheet. Okay, or you could, uh, or you can get individuals to do this around their own locality. So maybe a homework task is each pupil goes home, find five locations in their area and locates that, or each pupil brings in their location and records that on the map. So what we would end up with is something like this. This is our spreadsheet, so our, our data table. So as you can see in the two columns I've got here, I've got one that says grid ref. So this is my location-based information where I'm stood. And in this case, we have to call this label, and that would be the sound locations or the sound levels at these locations. And as I said, you can record these one individual in their own location, or you can actually put names against each pupil and their locality so you can record it for their um, particular place. So this is how you correct create your data table. So within Digimap Schools, there is a help page. So there's a little question mark at the top. I will show this in a minute, guys. And this tells you the contents of how you can add your own data. So all the different types of formats we can use to do this. So you can use, for instance, we're going to use grid reference. You can use Eastern Northerns. You can use Latin Long. You can use postcode. One key thing, important information I said here, guys, your spreadsheet must be saved as a .csv file. So that's a comma delimited file. So when you look at your Excel extensions and the different types you can save it as, it has to be saved as a .csv file. So then we can then save that in that format. And this will what our map will look like. So we can see all our points and, and locations. Other ways you can use this around your own school sites, guys. So microclimates is a really good one to do with your pupils. Again, this can be relevant for both you guys at primary and secondary. So we can record temperature, wind speed, rainfall, sound, et cetera. Lots of ways to do this. So let's look at how we do this in Digimap for Schools. I'm going to jump to Digimap for Schools website. And I'm going to log in. So I've created my data table, which we can see here with my sound levels and my locations. Save that as that CSV file. Remember, it's very important you save it as a CSV file. And all I have to do then to upload my data, as I come over to the little icon here, it says add your own data. So it gives me an option to browse. It also tells you some of the options we got here for the data we can use. So I'm going to browse. And then I'm going to navigate to where I've got my data file saved, which is this one. I'm going to click open. And then I simply hit import. And as you can see, it automatically geo references those points or locations. So you don't have to physically find points on a map. We can use our data table, which we can collect at any point, save as a CSV file, then 
import that into the software and it will instantly geo-reference all those locations. So it's a great way to start going and do some extra GIS work, in this case using data tables, to collect spatial information in a location. Now, as I mentioned in the question mark, guys, at the top here, when we come in and we, we want to look at adding your own data, we can come to that link and it will tell you how you do this. So these are the different file formats we can collect. So not only can we collect points and locations, you can also collect um, your locations. You can have a tracker and you can record that tracker as you go on a journey as well. How to import your file, create it as a CSV, and then tells you all the different formats we can do to create that as well. So lots of ways to be able to do that. So that's how we upload our data. So talking about microclimates and sounds for a local geography. Uh, a couple more examples of what you can do, guys. So here's an example that I've got. This is from my own daughter's Key Stage 4 field trip to a beach location. So as part of her field work, they went to one of their beach locations. So they were looking at sand heights at groins. So some, if some of you guys are doing Key Stage 4, you might do this with your pupils as that field work element. Uh, so I went on the school trip as my daughter and her group went around recording the sand heights at the groins. I followed them around using the Gridpoint GB app, recorded their location stole the piece of paper with the sand heights on, recorded that as a data table, as we've seen as our CSV file, and then uploaded that into their, onto the map and created this map for them. So the advantage of this, of using GIS in this way is not only do your pupils have a list of numbers, which doesn't really mean a lot to them, but when we can use a medium like a map, we can actually see what that looks like in a location. So as said, their geography here was to look at was their longshore drift, and can they then use this map to see the sand heights and work out based on the information they've got, they can show that there is actually a longshore drift in this location. So there's a, a real world example of using it with your key stage four pupils, but you guys said you can do microclimates around your own school location to collect your data. Now, what I'm going to look at really quickly as well, guys, is using secondary data. So in this case, is using data from another source and using this within a map. So I'm just going to refresh my map on the screen. And then I'm going to jump to a different web page. Now, one of the ones I like using, guys, is the USGS website. So the USGS collect real-time earthquake information. And then you can take the data that underpins this and use this in Digimap for schools. So as you can see, I've got a link on the front page here that says latest earthquakes. So I can come into this and I said the USGS record these in real time. So we can see all the earthquakes in the last two and a half years. So this is a really good website to show with your pupils because I imagine your pupils may only think earthquakes happen once in a while. But as we can see, guys, there are constantly earthquakes on the planet and we can see where these all are and where they're recorded. And we get our list of all our earthquakes here on the left. So what we're going to do very quickly is we're going to take the data that underpins this map, slightly change it, and then we're going to use that in Digimap for Schools. So to do this, I'm going to come to the panel on the left-hand side here, guys, and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the panel until you get to a button that says Download. So it gives us the option to download this information. So I can download a CSV file, so this data table that we can then use within our GI software and within Digimap for Schools. So I will download that, which I've already done, and I then get presented with this huge, great big data table, as you can see here, guys. So there's lots of information, and this underpins that map in USGS. Now, for me to be able to use this, I need to repackage it slightly so I can use it in Digimap for Schools. Now, when you use secondary data and you want to create data tables, you have to have a geo-reference within that data somewhere. So within this data, I can actually use the Latin long. So this will give me my global locations, which is the data I'm going to use. And I'm actually going to look at the magnitude of these earthquakes at these points or locations. So I'm going to highlight the three columns. So I'm going to highlight latitude, longitude, and mag. And all I'm going to do then is I'm going to copy those. And I'm going to open a blank worksheet. I'm going to call this sheet one. And I'm going to paste that information into that worksheet. So I have my three columns, I have my geo identifier, and I have the information that I want to record, which in this case is magnitude. Now to use this in Digimap for Schools, I need to make one change. So we always have to call the column or extra information, we have to call that label. So I have just have to change that heading to label. 
And then what I can do with that other rest of that data sheet, I can delete that because I no longer need that. So it leaves me with a spreadsheet with just three columns in. And then I'm going to go to file and save as. So I'm going to save it somewhere I can find it, which is the most important part. So I'm going to save that onto my desktop. As I said, I can give it any name I like. So I'm just going to change that to 1411. And as I said, when you save this files, guys, it has to be this file, the CSV comma delimited file. So if you come in, it normally defaults to your Excel workbooklet, but make sure you select comma delimited file. And all I've got to do is save that. And then I'm going to jump back to Digimap for Schools and I'm going to upload that data. So first of all, though, I'm going to zoom out to show you the extent of the world. And then I'm going to change my view to Atlas. And because we're looking at earthquakes, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to overlays. I'm going to add my world physical geography and I'm actually going to overlay my tectonic plates on my map like so. And then I'm going to use the information we just collected from the USGS and map those latest earthquakes. So all that I have to do is to add my own data, navigate to where my file is. Here we go, click open, hit import. And as you can see, guys, it instantly geo-references all of my earthquakes that I've taken from the USGS website. So now I can see where they are against all the fault lines and see which countries they're in. And I can see the magnitudes of all these earthquakes. So we can see there's a couple there near the Dominican Republic, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really nice way to use secondary data, in this case from the USGS website, but the same concept that we're just going to take the data that underpins this, repackage it slightly, and then upload it into our data and information. And as well as the USGS website, another one you can use, guys, is the police website. Now, the police website used to be a fantastic website for getting data out of. Not quite as useful as it once was because there's a little bit of manual intervention in there now. But what we can do is we can collect crime data for a location. So I've got all the crime information from here. Again, this is geo-referenced in a data table. And then I can upload that data into a location and use that information from the police website to look at crime in a locality. So a nice little project here was looking at if these are the buffers at one at one kilometer and five kilometers, where would you put a police station and police and people on the beat and that kind of thing? So guys, this is a Digibyte really short one. That's a 15 minute presentation on how to use um, geospatial data and upload your own information into um, Digimap for schools. So. I'm going to stop there, guys, and then we're going to stop for some questions. So if anybody's got any questions or they'd like me to explain something again, please feel free to pop that in the chat, guys.